Hey guys, welcome to lecture 18. Uh, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about uh, more sort of properties and definitions and theorems related to uniform convergence of sequences of functions. So in the first uh, section here, we're going to basically adapt the concept of Cauchy sequences to sequences of functions in a useful way, right? So of course, sort of just like with convergence, right? There was like a trivial concept of convergence, not trivial, but like, you know, the, the sort of most immediate concept of convergence for functions was pointwise convergence, right? And so correspondingly, there, there, you know, you could define a concept of pointwise Cauchy, uh, like saying that a sequence of functions is pointwise Cauchy, and that would just be like, you know, if at every x value, the sequence of values fn of x, as n, you know, as n varies, right, you get a sequence for a fixed value of x. If that sequence is Cauchy, then, you know, uh, if for, for every value of x, then you could call that pointwise Cauchy. We don't even really define it because it's not a particularly, I don't know, you don't use that property all that often. Um, so, uh, but, but, you know, just like with uniform convergence, it will be useful to have a uniform version of the Cauchy criterion for sequences of functions. And, uh, and the, the way to phrase it is actually pretty simple. I mean, the way to sort of like make this, you know, adaptation is for, pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm gonna just uh, state it now. So, so a sequence then of functions defined on S in R is uniformly Cauchy if so oh uniformly Cauchy on S, sorry. Don't want to forget that. If um, because you could have a sequence of functions defined on some large set, right? And then if you restrict your attention to a certain subset, it might be so. It might be that the sequence on the whole set does not is not uniformly Cauchy. But then if you like restrict to a much smaller subset, maybe the sequence does become uniformly Cauchy just on that subset. So it can depend on the set that you're looking at, right? Uh, so the property is this. So basically the idea is that we can choose the epsilon, right? There's like an epsilon involved in the Cauchy criterion. Uh, the Cauchy criterion for just normal sequences says that like for every epsilon, or not, sorry, not choose epsilon. We can choose capital N, uh, right? Uh, so like the Cauchy criterion involves choosing a capital N for some epsilon for like a normal sequence, right? In this case, it's like we'd be choosing a capital N for like each, for some epsilon and like any value of X that we're given. But the uniform version is just saying that we can choose the same capital N for every value of X, right? So, oh, dang it. Right. So uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N, remember. So it's like the fact that I'm quantifying capital N right now means that it can only depend on epsilon, such that uh, for all N and M greater than N and for all X and S, we have absolute value of fn minus absolute, or fn of x minus fm of x is less than epsilon, okay? So it's uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. And yeah, notice that x gets quantified all the way at the end here, just like in the definition of uniform convergence. You can also see this, like, if you remember the way we got the Cauchy condition originally, right? Like one way you can think about the original Cauchy condition for sequences is it's kind of like you take the definition of convergence and then in, instead of F and instead of like, sorry, instead of like S and S naught, you have like S, instead of SN and S naught, you have SN and SM. And then instead of for all N greater than N, you have like for all N and M greater than N. So we just did the exact same modification to the definition of uniform convergence or sequences of functions. Um, we just took we just added in this little m, and then instead of having f, we have fm, right? So it's the difference between two terms, two terms in the sequence fm, right? So uh, one of the like main uses of this, so this is useful, sorry, this is useful for 
situations where we don't know the limit f, All right? Just like with normal sequences of numbers, it was helpful to know that like Cauchy sequences of numbers converge because then it's like, if you don't have a nice way of expressing um, the value of the limit, uh, then you can still show that a sequence is Cauchy and, and know that it converges to some number. And that can actually be a useful way to like define certain numbers in the same, in the same way, actually in the same manner, the Cauchy criterion for sequences gives us our sequences of functions gives us a way of actually defining certain functions that can't really be defined any other way. So in fact, that's actually one of the main reasons we're even interested in sequences of functions in the first place is that there are special functions out there that you can really sensibly only define as the limit of a certain sequence of functions. And because they're so difficult to define and understand, it's, it's, it's not possible to show those sequences of functions converge to the limit beforehand because you don't know what the limit is. So you have to show that they're Cauchy, they're, you have to show that they're uniformly Cauchy basically. Um, okay, so uh, let's actually prove the, let's see. Now I'll, I'll leave that for another video. So yeah, in the next video we'll prove the main uh, theorem, or not the main theorem, but we'll prove uh, the first important theorem about uniformly Cauchy sequences, which is that a uniformly Cauchy sequence converges uniformly to a function. Okay, so that's it for this video.